Welcome back. The second important design aspects in the design of sheet metal cutting dies is the clearance between punch and die. So important parameters in sheet metal cutting are uh, the stock thickness, the thickness of the sheet, the type of metal and its strength, the length of cut and the clearance between punch and die. Clearance is the distance between punch cutting edge and die cutting edge. Typical values range between 4% and 8% of stock thickness. So clearance is generally mentioned as a percentage of the thickness of the sheet that is being cut. Clearance is always expressed as the amount of clearance per side. So we have to give a clearance on both sides. So whenever reading the value of clearance, that means that is clearance to be given on each side. Clearance is necessary to allow the fractures to meet when the break occurs. So if clearance is excessive, then large edge radius is produced, large burrs are present at break edge and break is not smooth. So here is the example of excessive clearance. So you could see that uh, in this case, in, in the figure B, is the example of excessive clearance. So we could see an oversized bar and in figure A, the clearance is too small. The clearance is too small. So the fractures that start at the punch edge and die edge do not properly meet. So this clearance needs to be optimal. So shearing of sheet metal between two cutting edges shown here. So here you can see this is just before cutting. So we have to give a proper clearance between punch and die. And once the punch uh, touches the sheet, uh, it is penetrating the sheet. It, it uh, presses the sheet. And after that, fracture starts to occur at the punch edge as well as at the die edge. And once both fractures meet, the cutting takes place. So it is very important that both fractures meet properly. So punch compresses and penetrates into work, causing a smooth cut surface. And the fracture is initiated at the opposing cutting edges, which separates the sheet in, in figure four in this case. So recommended clearance is calculated by this formula C is equal to A into T. So C is the clearance, A is the allowance and T is the sheet thickness. So allowance A is determined according to the type of metal that is being cut. So the calculated clearance values can be applied to conventional blanking and hole punching operations to determine the proper punch and die sizes. So we will come back to this point in one of the following slides how clearance is used to determine the size of punch and die. This is the table from Machinery's Handbook. So values of clearance as a percentage of the thickness of the material. So for example, if the thickness is less than 0.04 inches and the material is low carbon steel, then the clearance will be 5% of the thickness. And if it is between 0.04 to 0.08, the clearance will be 6% of the thickness and so on. So if you are having hard brass that is having a thickness of say 0 0.150, so that will be in this range. So uh, the clearance will be 9% of that thickness. So how clearance can be used to determine the size of punch and die in the cutting operations? So first there is a rule of thumb that the die opening must always be larger than the punch size. So that is obvious because punch after cutting moves into the die opening. Now, whether to add the clearance value to the punch size or subtract it from the die size depends on whether the part being cut out is a blank or slug. If it is a punching operation, then the size of the punch determines the size of the punch hole. So whatever is the size of the punch hole will be the size of the punch and we will add clearance to that size of the punch to determine the size of the die. Now, if the part being cut is a blank, 
then that size of the blank will be the size of the die and we will subtract clearance out of that size of the die to determine the size of the blanking punch. So that is the rule of thumb. Apart from the clearance between punch and die, we have to assign angular clearance as well. So there is a straight portion of the die that is used for resharpening so, so that after we are out, we can this extra material and so that the life of the die is increased. So a small amount of angular clearance is provided below the die opening and purpose is to allow slug or blank to drop through the die. So purpose of this angle is to help uh, blank or slug to drop. So this angle is also expressed in degrees per side. So its range is from 0.25 to two degrees on each side. There is a phenomena that occurs in most of the sheet metal operations that is called condition of recovery or spring back. So that must be catered for as well. So when the cutting operation is completed, a small amount of spring back occurs. The hole in stock material reduces in diameter. So hole reduces in diameter and grips tightly to the punch. Once this material is stripped of the punch, the material recovers and hole size decreases. So the hole is actually smaller than the punch that produced it. Similarly, the blank part increases in diameter or the size and grips tightly in the die opening that produced it. So the blank part is larger than the die opening which produced it. So we have to make the hole slightly larger and blanks slightly smaller. So that value that uh, has to be added or subtracted depends upon uh, the material of the sheet that is being cut. But as a rule of thumb, 0 0.002 inches arbitrarily taken as an allowance for a round punch and die. And if the punch is not round, the value is 0 0.001 inches. Thus, to produce a one inch hole, the punch should be slightly greater. That will be equal to uh, 1.002 inches in diameter. And to produce a one inch blank, the die opening should be 0.998 inches in diameter. Now, if the part were not round, then instead of 0 0.002, we, we would have taken a value of 0 0.001 inches. So let's take the same part that we, we use for calculating the number of strips and the number of blanks and percent scrap and percent utilization. So this part is to be made using blanking. So calculate and draw the dimensions of the punch and die by hand using the standard views of the die set for sheet metal dies. So let's keep it simple. And as it is a blanking operation, so whatever is shown here is actually uh, the size of the blanking die. So the opening in the die block will have the same dimensions. And we will subtract the spring back, uh, sorry, we will subtract the clearance to, to determine the size of the punch. So whatever is shown here is actually uh, the size of the blanking die. And we will be subtracting clearance depending upon the material that is being cut to determine the size of the punch. So we will have something like this. So you could notice this, uh, this die block and the, this, the opening in the die block that is actually a shape of the part that we are making and this is the punch. So we, are, we have applied a shear to the punch to reduce the cutting forces. We have to draw these views of punch and die on the standard views that we discussed in the last lecture. So as you may recall that on the top right, we are having the view of the punch. So that is the blanking punch. On the top left, we are having the top Blanking die, so that is the die opening. This is the strip that is being fed 
and we are having the back gauge and there will be a front spacer somewhere as well. And at the bottom left, we are having the front view of the punch and the die and bottom right, we are having the side view of the punch and the die. Now, if the part is, uh, a part being blank is a circular part, then the D subscript H, that is the, uh, the diameter of the hole, that will determine the hole punch diameter. So if it is a punching operation, because we are making the hole and we will add clearance to it to determine the die diameter. If we are having a wrong blank, then the diameter of the blank will determine the uh, diameter of the die and we will subtract clearance to determine the diameter of the punch. So something like this. So for the hole, this is the diameter of the punch and for a blank, this is the diameter of the die. We will explain the concept of punch and die. Uh, we will explain the concept of clearance between punch and die with the help of a video. So in sheet metal cutting, there needs to be a clearance between punch and die. And this is similar to cutting something with the help of scissors. So there is a gap between upper cutting edge and lower cutting edge of the scissor. They are not exactly uh, one upon each other. And it is better to apply shear to the cutting edge. So that is called shear angle or rake angle. So here you could see that there is Shear angle applied to the cutting punch as well as there is some clearance between punch and die. So both are important. So as the punch descends, so the contact area of the punch with the sheet is small. So that will reduce the cutting force. And this angle actually on the front edge also makes it for the punch to move easily into the die. And of course, there is the required clearance between punch and die. So the punch penetrates into the sheet up to certain uh, thickness. And then after that, the cutting takes place. So that uh, distance is called percent penetration. The distance that the punch moves into the sheet before cutting takes place. So there needs to be a certain clearance. And it is better if the punch on the front edge also has an angle as uh, in addition to the angle on the cutting edge. So that is the shear angle you could notice here. So that reduces the cutting force and this angle on the face makes the punch easy to move uh, into the die. And of course the clearance needs to be optimum as well. So these factors make the cutting smooth as well as reduce the cutting force. Thank you very much.